Um, it's an incredible honor for me to be here to share my life story and research with you. Um, okay. Um, I was born and raised in Singapore. And if you're wondering where Singapore is and try to locate the place on a world map, you probably will need to use a magnifying glass. Um, Singapore is one of the smallest countries in the world with a total land area of about 280 square miles, um, slightly smaller than New York City. Um, for all of its small size, um, Singapore does punch above its weight on many aspects. Um, so I attended um, secondary and pre-tertiary education at Victoria School and Victoria Junior College, um, where I developed an interest in science, especially chemistry. Um, and following that, um, I actually went to military, where I served two years of national service um, as an army soldier. Um, and you can imagine that the transition from a student to a soldier wasn't that um, easy, but uh, I got to learn important life lessons of discipline, um, determination, and perseverance. Um, following that, um, I started my uh, undergraduate studies at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, majoring in chemistry and biological chemistry. It was during this time that I met and interacted with um, Professor Tech Ping Lo, um, one of the first few people who inspired me to do organic chemistry um, as a subject. And I briefly worked in his group for, uh, for, uh, for a few months over summer research before I moved to work with uh, Professor Philip Chen for almost three years including a final year project where I worked on gold catalyzed cycloisomerization reactions to construct um, complex cyclic compounds. And I'm grateful to this gentleman and other professors at NTU for supporting me when I decided to apply for graduate school overseas. Um, my grad school application wasn't the most successful because I applied to nine schools um, across North America and Canada. But unfortunately, I only got accepted into one institution. Um, and so I flew almost 10,000 miles um, to Massachusetts uh, to begin my graduate studies at Boston College, where I got the chance to work in the group of Professor Amir Hoveda, um, uh, developing catalytic olefin metathesis reactions. Um, during the course of these studies, I got the chance to work with the team uh, uh, from Professor Richard Schrock's group at MIT. Um, in retrospect, I think um, as I was privileged to work in the Hoveda group uh, because I was constantly exposed to compelling problems in research. Um, I learned how to develop meaningful projects and grow as a scientist. But beyond just technical knowledge and skills, I think one of the best things that I've gained from grad school is a bunch of good friends and colleagues. Um, many of them I still keep in contact with, uh, and I'm sure some of them are tuning in right now. Um, I thank them for their support and friendship and for bearing with me all those years. Um, during my graduate studies at BC, I worked in collaboration with a fantastic group of scientists from both BC and MIT. Um, we, uh, so together we um, designed different classes of ruthenium carbenes and molybdenum alkylidines as catalysts to promote um, uh, olefin cross metathesis reactions that generate stereochemically defined alkene products, many of which are highly valuable but extremely syn uh, difficult to synthesize. For instance, we uh, managed to overcome challenges that promote um, direct cross metathesis between olefin substrates um, with commercially available and inexpensive alkene reagents to access the allyl alcohols, the alkeno halides, and CF3 substituted cis alkenes. All of these alkene products have potential applications for various industries, including flavors and fragrances pharmaceuticals, and agrochemicals. Um, and 
to the best of my knowledge, these catalysts are now produced on tan scale, and some of them are now commercially available to empower chemical users in all the film metallurgy applications. And I'm grateful to Professor Hoveda for giving me many opportunities to grow and develop as a researcher and for his continuous support and advice when I decided to pursue um, uh, a career in academia. Um, so with these experiences in catalyst design and reaction de development, um, and after a short postdoctoral stint in the same group, I returned to Singapore to begin my independent studies at the National University of Singapore. Um, and uh, I wish to thank my senior colleagues for their efforts to recruit me at NUS. Uh, we started with a small group of students in the summer of 2018. And after more than a year of research, we were hit by the global pandemic in the following two years, just like everyone else. It was a difficult period, but I'm extremely proud of my team of students because we managed to overcome the challenges and emerged from the situation stronger and more resilient as a group. And we got to publish more than 30 research articles um, at NUS. One of the most, um, I, sh I should say, one of the key research objectives of my group um, is driven by two main challenges facing the chemical industry worldwide. First, there is an over-reliance on precious metal catalysis. If you compare the relative cost and abundance of precious metals such as platinum versus non-precious base metals such as iron and nickel, you can see that base metals are much more economic options to make catalysts. In addition, um, many precious deri metal-derived catalyst systems can only mediate a limited range of transformations. And that means, in many instances, longer synthetic sequences have to be involved to convert a starting material to the final target product. And as we all know, the more steps that we incur in the synthetic process, the more energy, resources, and time have to be consumed, and the more waste and spent carbon-based solvents generated at the end of the process. Sometimes this is underappreciated because we also use spur solvents in reaction workup and purification. As a result, this leads to more CO2 and toxic waste emissions, higher labor costs as a result of long synthetic sequences, and other environmental problems related to global warming and climate change. So how do we mitigate these pressing issues? Our approach to address these challenges is to develop non-precious metal-derived catalyst systems to promote sustainable uh, organic synthesis. Um, not only are base metals cheaper and more abundant, um, base metal-derived catalysts possess unique properties and distinct reactivity and selectivity profiles, enabling them to um, promote unprecedented chemical bond transformations between previously unimaginable substrates. And that means new opportunities for us to make molecules cheaper and faster. So over the last four years, we uh, managed to develop a series of base metal catalyst systems to promote new chemical reactions um, to, uh, to synthesize high value organic compounds more efficiently in less steps, reducing the overall waste generation and minimizing our environmental footprint ultimately making the whole synthetic process greener and more sustainable. One powerful class of reactions that we developed using base metal catalysis involved the cross-coupling of olefin feedstocks. Olefins, as shown in black in this green jigsaw uh, piece, are one of the most abundant raw materials in organic chemistry. They can serve as linchpins to merge two or more components together to assemble a complex scaffold. Um, so this enables us to rapidly generate a, 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 a diverse array of complex molecules, and the resulting products are typically drug-like building blocks that can be further elaborated to um, high-value compounds such as pharmaceuticals and other, and other fine chemicals. And this process is um, analogous to Lego on a molecular scale, where we use these individual building blocks to construct a more sophisticated structure in one single process making these reactions highly attractive for building molecules with less resources. Um, 
one of this, um, the challenges that we um, uh, that we were interested to overcome is to use uh, olefin cross-coupling reactions to generate boron-containing compounds, in particular LQ boronate compounds. As shown in a recent review, LQ boronates uh, can be readily diversified to a wide variety of organic molecules through established carbon boron to carbon X bond transformations. Therefore, the ability to access LQ boronates from abundant olefin feedstocks is highly attractive. Unfortunately, many challenges still remain in the field at that time. One of those challenges, for example, is that is the, um, it is difficult to install a boron group at the less activated beta position. Um, and we managed to address this problem by developing earth abundant iron based catalyst to insert a boron at the beta position um, across a range of olefins, regardless of chain length. And we utilize these newly developed protoboration reactions to, um, to streamline organic synthesis by transforming a mixture of olefins to a single borrelated product. Um, by selectively tuning the rates of isomerization and boron insertion, we could also selectively um, generate different regional isomers of boreal alkane compounds for various applications in synthetic chemistry. In another project, we developed um, an iron catalyzed three component system where we merge olefins with alkeno halides and a diboron reagent to access alkeno boration products. Um, the resulting um, synthetically useful homo allylic boronates uh, can be readily diversified to a range of useful compounds, including natural products such as imperinine, as shown on this slide. Besides borrelations, we were interested to um, develop reactions to implement regional selective olefin carbofunctionizations. Um, historically, in this field, one of the uh, most common strategies is to employ, uh, install a directing group within the olefin substrate, and that helps to direct in site selective additions of carbon based functional groups across unactivated olefins. And it goes through a mechanism where the directing group coordinates to the organometallic species, and that helps to increase its reactivity and directs its insertion across the double bond. That can be further transformed to the final difunctionization product in high regional selectivity. Over the years, um, different directing groups have been introduced by the groups of Engel, Jury, and others. Um, but a common criticism uh, for this strategy is that you have to pre-install a directing group and then remove or transform it at the end of the process. Sometimes this generates unnecessary waste. A simple question that we ask ourselves is, how do we um, devise a complementary strategy that avoids directing groups? And this, is, was the, and this was a major challenge at that time in the field. And we managed to overcome this problem by, um, after a number of years of experimentation, we discovered that uh, a class of non-precious nickel catalyst that contains an electron donating and sterically hindered n hectocyclic carbene ligand. These catalysts are capable of promoting regional selective olefin carbofunctionizations without a directing group. And it goes through a pathway known as catalyst control. Uh, where, the, where the energetically favored transition state, TSA, as shown in blue, uh, is favored by avoiding steric repulsions between the large um, ligand on the nickel and the olefin substituents. And this enables us to selectively generate intermediate A that can be further subjected to a diverse range of transformations to obtain different products. And this led to a series of papers in the last couple of years and the importance of this strategy to streamline organic synthesis was highlighted last year by CNEM. And so we leveraged this class of catalysts to significantly shorten the steps and enhance the efficiency of generating um, diverse organic building blocks and bioactive molecules. For instance, we developed uh, reactions that generate um, uh, compounds one, compounds two, compounds three, and recently, we extended towards enantioselective catalysis to generate enantio-enriched compounds. 
to switch gears a little bit, we employed, uh, we extended the use of base metal catalysis towards synthesizing complex carbohydrates, in particular, C glycoxides. C glycoxides are carbohydrate molecules in which the carbon oxygen bond on the glycoxide carbon is replaced by a more robust carbon carbon bond. And this replacement has been demonstrated to increase the potency of the parent drug molecule by many orders of magnitude. Prior to our investigations, the use of base metal catalysis to generate these products is limited. And we successfully developed reaction technologies that employ a non-precious titanium or iron catalyst in the presence of a mild reducing agent, activate glycoxyl halides to generate reactive glycoxyl radicals that can be trapped in a series of carbon-carbon bond forming transformations to generate a diverse array of C glycoxides for different applications in sugar therapeutic synthesis and to further enhance our understanding of biological processes. And work is ongoing in our group to extend the use of base metal catalysis towards upcycling plastic waste to new functional materials. And I hope to discuss these results in due course. I've come to the most important page of my presentation. Uh, I wish to thank all um, the lab members, both past and present, and collaborators from both local and international institutions who, who have contributed to the work that I presented today. Without these partners, I wouldn't have the chance to share this work with you. I would like to acknowledge uh, funding support from the Ministry of Education of Singapore and NUS, and of course, CNEN for this incredible recognition and for arranging this amazing symposium. Last but not least, I'd like to thank my parents for their unwavering uh, love and support throughout the years. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, MJ. Um, I was wondering, could you talk a little bit about the challenges of working with base metals in catalysis versus uh, metals that have traditionally been used? Sure. So, um, well, precious metals such as palladium, for, for example, a number of um, uh, research has been uh, focused on this aspect where um, where the mechanisms in these reactions are much more established. Working with base metals such as nickel and especially iron, um, where the mechanisms are not as well developed and not as well known, um, it takes more effort to really understand how these reactions work first before you can actually use these pathways to design reactions to access the products that you want. So I would say that more time is needed for us at least to understand or develop reactions using base metals uh, just because uh, the mechanisms are not as well known compared to precious metals. All right. Thank you very much.